Hey everybody, Greg Pruitt here with Idaho Dispatch, and most of you know that have been following us for a little while, we tried to interview as many candidates as possible because we believe the voters deserve to know as much information about as many candidates, despite whatever party they are, no matter if you like the candidate or don't like the candidate, we are trying to get you the information and then you guys decide you know, who you want to vote for based on whatever information we can provide you. So with that, I am joined by Cody Usabel. How are you? Good. Good. So you are a candidate, I would say that, I believe you were one of the first ones to technically file, if I remember from the SOS filings. Um, you know, let's, I guess first, let's talk about, you know, what makes you want to jump into the governor, right? I mean, you're trying to run for the top spot in the entire state. You know, what what clicked inside your head that went, I need to go do that? Yep, there's a there's a few things on the the degradation of culture, I think, in you know, around the nation and, and here in Idaho, as the radical left is kind of putting their influences on every part of our lives and um, our schooling system and also, you know, we have fake Republicans or spineless Republicans that won't stand up to it, so I'm here to do that. Um. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, was there anything in particular, you know, so right now governor little has not officially announced that he's running again, but it's anticipated that he is most likely going to run again next year. Uh, so was, was your intention when you were running like, Hey, you know, governor little did some things I didn't like anything specific, or was it just an overall, I just, I just want to go do this job better than somebody else is doing it. Yep, there's a, you know, a lot of stuff that he's not doing right that I don't agree with as far as you know, accepting to follow all the mandates, shutting down businesses. You know, we, sh we never should have got to where we are right now. And then even talk of uh, vaccine passports or, or uh, you know, four shots. No, we shouldn't be doing that either. He should be standing up for you know, the conservatives and Republicans. That's what he was voted in for. Um, but I mean, as far as you know, other things that, that I wanted to run for too is, you know, I, we just had our daughter in November, my wife and I, and is that you know, your first, first kid that is our first okay. yeah, daughter. Um, it's the schooling system now is, you know, they have a, like I said, the radical left has kind of came in with their own cur curriculum and views. And now they're starting to follow that. Um, so I want to have some control over that <laughs> to where, you know, we, we have a curriculum that supports our conservative values. Um, that will be good to follow. <laughs> okay. So let's, I guess, dive into a, a couple of the issues, you know, that I know, you know, may come up on the campaign trail and some of the same issues that we talked to a lot of candidates about. Uh, one of the big ones here in Idaho is the Second Amendment. Uh, what are your views and, and thoughts on the Second Amendment? Yeah, the Second Amendment is great because without that one, we'll have no others. Um, I shoot, sport shoot, hunt, and I carry all the time. Um, I definitely think we... <laughs> all need to be supporting the second amendment because without it i mean look what's happening around the world right now people that don't have any way of rebelling against the government they're in tough water and doing whatever they're told to do so i support it 100 percent okay and if, yeah anything comes down federal wise too um i'll be blocking it anything that i don't agree with or the conservative values won't agree with federally should be blocked okay. that's what our governor's supposed to do you know that's his job. Okay. So shifting a little bit into abortion, are you pro-life, pro-choice, or somewhere in between? Yeah, I'm pro-life. I definitely think in Idaho we need to, you know, set the culture we want, um, have the conservative values that we want, and that's pro-life. Um, I don't think there should be any abortion. There's plenty of other options out there, you know, such as adoption, that when that kid's born, you know, somebody will take him or her instead of aborting it that that's crazy i mean after we had i haven't always had that view i've just kind of thought you know whatever the woman wants to do she can do whatever but after we had our daughter and i held her for the first time like there's no way that any any person should ever be aborted somebody out there will will love her for him you know so that's <laughs> something okay. we should we should keep here in idaho Okay. So uh, switching now into education, you'd briefly mentioned education a little bit and how the, what curriculum is being taught. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the funding. The funding is always something that comes up quite a bit. 
during legislative session, for instance, you know, and uh, should we pay people more, pay people less, or how, you know, should the money be spent in a different direction and in different methods, you know, cut spending, increase spending, leave it the way it is. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I had excellent schools or school teachers, I thought, when I was growing up. I went to Marsing, and uh, I thought they were all pretty good, at least the ones that I that I had. Um, I think um, as far as funding goes, you know, if uh, we had our, you know, conservative values and things that were taught in school and we had to prove curriculums, um, I think more beneficial to having the curriculum um, and then you you'll know what your money's getting you. Um, also, um, if we can hold teachers uh, accountable for what they're teaching. Um, I, you know, like I said, you kind of have this radical left uh, agenda of stuff that they're teaching in school and, and sexualizing little kids and um, stuff that we shouldn't be doing. So if, if parents would see that, you know, this is what the curriculum is being taught, I think they'd be happy on both sides on how much they are spending and how much they're getting. Okay. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about why uh, President Biden was here recently in Boise and he met with Governor Little and some others to talk about wildland fires. Uh, forest fires have been you know, a major issue and concern throughout the entire Western United States. Um, you know, do you have any views on what does need to be done regarding forest fires or doesn't need to be done or how do you think that problem could be handled? Yeah, I definitely think um, as far as the forest fires and their um, happening so often, we should definitely do some more logging. I mean, this is kind of going back to setting your culture and the values that you want in this state and we have a lot of timber. That's what we should be doing is logging. Um, that's what makes a huge industry run you know employs people gives people's jobs um also that's that's idaho's um resource you know the timber so money from the timber that you get every annually we should kind of give a check out to you know every idahoan because that's our resource that we're giving away i know some counties give it or some give it to counties but it should be for every idahoan and i think uh, people's mind would turn around because Devastating forest fires aren't helping anybody. That's really hurting us, and it costs more money in the end. And the other problem that we'll run into is uh, environmentalist groups that want to do endless litigation or, or shut down areas that we want to log. And I think they should be held financially responsible if if there's a you know wildfire going through that area. So one last policy question, and then we'll uh, kind of start wrapping it up. Uh, Taxes and spending. Right now, Idaho has a massive surplus of taxes that have been brought in. A lot of that and probably due in large part to the big population boom we have. And so the, the revenue stream from taxpayers continues to grow. Uh, what are your thoughts on the current status of Idaho spending and taxes? And what would you like to do as governor? Yeah, um, <laughs> I would like to definitely reduce taxes. I mean, we're, we're taxed on everything. There's, there's nothing that the government doesn't get their, their fingers in. Um, it's a little bit ridiculous. Uh, as, as far as uh, federal tax as well, I, mean, I think states really need to take control and start saying no to the federal government. Um, they take most of our money. Um, we can cover that later, but as far as the state goes, we really need to dial back. Um, we can never own our own property. We need to figure out something different instead of paying property tax for eternity. Uh, I guess that's it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, typically, at the end of my interviews, I will ask you know candidates about you know controversial things that have happened in the past or statements or anything like that. Um, you know, we I don't know you quite as well as maybe as I know some of the other candidates, and so I guess what I would like to do and, and what I know some of the you know. Re viewers or readers of the articles that we write might bring up is, you know, hey, you're really young. You haven't ran for state legislature before, right? You know, what, you know, why are you trying to go to the very top of the ticket when it comes to, to running for office? Yeah, I think uh, it's time for everyday people to uh, get into political office. You know, we're the ones out there doing the work 
every day we know what we want out of government and we know what we don't want out of government. I think it'll be more beneficial instead of having career politicians who are corrupt. You know, we, it's corruption. We see it everywhere. You know, they're just out there um, for their own interests and collecting money from, um, you know, special interest groups and lobbyists. And I think somebody else needs to step in and, and help actually help the people. Okay. So what do you say to say, hey, look, Cody, you sound like a great guy. I like your views. But, you know, you know Janice McGeehan or Ammon Bundy or, or Ed Humphreys, you know, they're well, more well-known. You don't stand a chance. Just get behind one of those guys and, and stop what you're doing. You know, what's your response to that? Yeah, they're well more, well, more well-known for sure, um, at least what I see on the media. So I'm trying to get my name out there. Um, I, don't, I don't think people know me yet. I think, uh, you know, once they get to know me and see my views and they'll, they'll relate. Um, I'm an Idahoan. I'm fourth generation. So, you know, kind of got to be, I'm skeptical of people from out of state coming in here and running for public office. And uh, I also am skeptical of politicians, you know, um, we've seen some just play politics when, you know, real, real issues are on the table and they do nothing, do nothing until it's a, you know, a win-win situation for them. That's that's playing politics. I don't want to do that. I'm I'm here for the people and what I have on my on my stance of everything. That's what I'm going to go on. It's you know, what I'll do. So. Okay. And now, are you planning to? I, I don't know how you know deep you're into your campaign yet. Are you are you going to be traveling the state and talking to people? Do you got campaign material and all that stuff? Or I guess the the question would be from maybe some people. You know, how serious are you taking your campaign? Yep. I, um, I work five days a week, so I have the weekends off. Um, I'm open to uh, going to people's places or getting in small groups and having discussion and Q&A or whatever they need. So if uh, someone wants me to travel around, they can uh, get me on Facebook. Um, I'm at Facebook at Usabelle for Governor. They message me there, and I'm more than happy to go around and talk to people or hit events. Uh, the last thing that we always do with candidates who are running for office is kind of give you a chance to give a pitch to the to the state of Idaho, to Idahoans, since you're running for governor. Uh, and so if you'd like, uh, give your final pitch. All right. Well, we've all seen what having the wrong person in the governor position can do to the state. So if uh, you're also tired of opening your paycheck and seeing all your money disappear to the government, you know, I'm, I'm your man. We need to get clean to stop that. Um, there's way too much overreach. You need someone to actually stand up for your conservative values. If that's what you really believe and that's what you want, that's me. We need to set the conservative values in Idaho, set the culture that we want in Idaho. Um, I'll be, you know, the man to do it. If that's what you guys want. Um, I don't get a lot of, I don't get any campaign donations from. Uh, lobbyist groups or special interest groups so there's no strings on me so what's in my platform is what's going to go um if you guys want to see what it is or you know learn more about me you can find me on facebook at usabel for governor um, i'm also on youtube at usabel make idaho great again um, if you like what you you read and you watch um, you can donate to my campaign on paypal or venmo and it's usabel M-I-G-A at gmail.com. Okay. All right. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it.